Hello guys, this is Jan. Um, before we get to painting this image right here, I would like to give you a quick overview over the interface that I have opened here in Photoshop CC. Um, most of the panels are pretty common and standard. They're good to have when you paint digitally and nothing out of the ordinary, but still worth looking at. Um, and there's one that's maybe a bit special and that's the actions panel that I created down here. So I have set this up to make working on a Cintiq a bit more convenient for me. So basically what this is, is just a collection of common Photoshop shortcuts that I've recorded actions for. So if you set up the actions window in button mode, you will get a panel that looks like this panel right here, as opposed to um, the default list display. I'm working on a Cintiq 22 HD, which is a pretty big monitor to have on your desk and in the most comfortable drawing position. The bottom edge of the monitor is quite close to the edge of the desk, which has always left little room for the keyboard. So I usually move the keyboard to the side or place it on my lap and then together with the Nostromo that I have to the left of the Cintiq, this replaces the keyboard for my drawing sessions. Just um, think of it as an extension of the keyboard back onto the screen as part of the interface with a collection of essential keyboard shortcuts and common other actions. So um, I'll show you how to set this up, but before that we'll just look at the rest quickly. So the first window that I like to have open when I paint digitally is the swatches window right here at the top left. I have saved a variety of colors that I frequently use as swatches. Um, I like to have a selection ready that covers a range from warms to colds, some earthy tones in greens and browns, some flesh tones and also uh, a value ramp from white to black right here. So I guess you can have a more reduced selection for specific images in here and really use this window like a classic color palette. In any case, I think uh, the swatches window is great to have it ready for color picking a specific color with one click. And uh, also a very nice addition that came with a recent update in Photoshop CC is this little row of swatches up here, which are the colors you recently picked. Um, I actually use this quite a lot and I think uh, it's a great little addition. Right, so next up is the color window. Um, as with all the other windows, you can find the color window up here in the Windows drop down menu under color, so check that. And um, the thing worth noting with the color window is the display that you want to have selected is the HSB sliders right here. And that's best when we're painting, since this mode looks at color in a traditional way. You've got U, simply set what color is the color. You've got saturation, how saturated the color is. And very important, you've got value, meaning how bright or dark the color is. Photoshop just labels this with B for brightness. Um, and since having good value range in painting is really key, it can come in very handy to be able to shift the value with this slider. With the other display modes, say RGB or any of the others for that matter, modifying a color in such fashion feels very cumbersome. Therefore, for painting, I'm gonna stick to the HSB sliders. So the next thing I wanna look at are the two presets over here. And um, two presets are really nice to have next to something like the brush presets. They're very similar but different. Uh, I just right clicked on the canvas to get the rather big palette of brushes that I also have. But I prefer having a smaller selection of brushes available through the two presets window. Basically, uh, it's a set of very simple round brushes with slightly different attributes and I use those to do the bulk of my work with. 
um, and along those there's just a few custom brushes like a cloud brush and some more chalky brushes so um, I guess a way to think of tool presets is it's a collection of favorite brushes in this case and that is because the currently selected tool is the brush tool so all you see in here right now are brushes saved as tool presets if you uncheck the current tool only um, checkbox here you will get the whole list of tool presets for all the other tools that you've got um, saved presets for if you check it back you will only get um, the list for the respectively selected tool as in this case the brushes or the eraser or be it the smudge tool or the uh, mixer brushes I like having this checked because it keeps this list um, small and tidy and say during the painting process I'm gonna have a need for a texture brush or some other fancy custom brush I just access those um, and look for it in the bigger list this is just stuff I collected from the net and they're great to have next um, to the tool presets but um, you know the purpose of having a smaller list is just you know to keep it simple keep it basic and not get distracted with um, too large of a list of custom brushes that may just be too overwhelming in the beginning so let's just look at this one brush that I use really a lot which is this uh, workhorse flow 50 brush it's really simple has hardness set to 75% spacing set to 9 and um, up here in the settings it's just got transfer checked and the uh, controls for opacity are set to pen pressure and same for the flow jitter um, and that's really it shape dynamics I don't check because I like to control the shape dynamics with this little icon up there and this overrides these shape dynamic settings for all the brushes that you have so I find it quite convenient to just use this if I want to modify one of my uh, non shape dynamic saved brushes in such a fashion so I can really quickly turn them into a brush that has shape dynamics on and so now if we paint with this brush let's see what it looks like um, nothing too spectacular but um, having the flow set to 50 um, gives it along with the already relatively soft edge of the brush a very nice attribute it gives it um, creamy almost oil painterly type feel that I like and um, you can see me color picking here the um, in between shading steps as we get lighter in value and having a brush with a soft edge along with um, flow setting a little bit lower I'm getting a brush that both lays down color nicely and does a pretty good job at blending at the same time okay so one more thing I want to talk about is saving your own tool presets so if we take this standard brush and modify it slightly by picking a different uh, brush tip like this square one uh, paint a little bit with it see how it works it's nice has nice little edges and let's say we like that we can s change the spacing a little and um, see what the other attributes are but as soon as we say we like this we can go down here and say okay I want to have this ready as a tool preset now and the main difference to for example normal brushes is when you save a tool preset you save all the attributes of the tool at its current state so the blending mode that the brush has the color you can include and you can give it a name just for this purpose let's name it something um, so that I recognize I gotta delete it later on and now this new brush is in there so I'll just switch to something else 
and um, there it is ready for painting from the two presets window now and let me show you how to maybe turn this one into a glow brush that you can save so I just changed the um, painting mode up there changed it to linear dodge and that's all I did so I'm gonna save this as a quick glow brush for this demo and um, say OK. So it's saved now as a brush ready for picking from the palette. And as you can see, it saved the painting mode for it, which is still linear dodge for add. And whenever we paint on top of existing color and value, it'll just make it glow really nicely. So. I guess in terms of features and difference that um, set two presets apart from say regularly saved brushes or tools is that really you save all the attributes of the tool at the current state like painting mode, the color you have, the size of the brush and everything with it, it gets saved. So. This is actually one of the main reasons why using two presets is really handy and practical. So I recommend using them along with your regularly saved other brushes and tools. So in the intro I mentioned that I made the specific collection of actions to accommodate my working with a Cintiq. Well, these actions serve as a mini interface with buttons. Some of the buttons hold common keyboard shortcuts such as B for brush or D for default colors or E for eraser and so on. Other buttons will trigger common tasks such as flipping the canvas or layer, copy and paste and such. Um, and it's also a good idea to color code similar actions like I did for the flip layer, flip canvas tasks. Uh, it'll just help readability quite a bit. So, to show how to set this up, I'll create a new set from scratch with a few sample actions as buttons. All right. so let's just get rid of the action set that's already in there, the Cintiq actions, and delete that. Okay, then we'll make a new set and call this demo set. Nice. So, as you can see, uh, to make new actions, I quickly had to get out of button mode to get into this list view. So we get these icons where we can start recording a new action. And the first action I'm going to record is just going to be a simple tool swap. And I'm going to want this button to basically just switch to the brush tool whenever I press it. So my hotkey that I got assigned for the brush is the standard hotkey, which is B in Photoshop. So that's what I'm going to name this action, B. And it goes into the demo set as well with no function key assigned. And I'll assign a color to it as well. Then we'll hit record. And press B for brush. And if it recorded the step, it'll show up in the list. And yep, so we press stop. So if we hop back into button mode again, we can now see that we have one very big green button that is labeled correctly. And to see if it works properly, it's just switch the tool quickly to the move tool and then press it. And yeah, it switched to the brush tool. So it performed the tool swap we wanted. And I'm going to record a few more tool swaps. Uh, another one that makes sense would be the eraser tool. So I get out of button mode and record a new action, call it E for eraser and uh, give it a color as well. Say record and just hit E and yes it did record it and press stop and then we go back into button mode. And yeah, we now have two very huge buttons, which is nice. And let's just see if they work. So now we can hop from the brush to the eraser and back with two new buttons that we made. It's nice. 
So I'm gonna fast forward a bit and repeat this process for a couple of other tool swaps that make sense so that this panel is a bit more populated. And then when we're done with that, I'm gonna show you how to record menu items such as zoom in, zoom out, flip canvas, uh, flip layer, stuff like that, which is nice to have as buttons as well. So with a few more tool swaps in the list, we're gonna move ahead to uh, some menu items. Um, so the first menu item we're going to record is for flipping the canvas or flipping layers. It's something that I frequently do and I uh, recommend that you do a lot too. So let's start with the flip layer. Uh, to be able to do that I need to actually first make a layer quickly, then paint something on it so we can see what's happening, and then we can start actually making this new action. So we'll call it flip layer, it goes into the demo set as before, assign a color to it, then hit record. Now with this layer selected, we wanna, what we want to do is go to insert menu item right here, um, which will give us this little window. And then what we need to do is to navigate to where this command is in the menus. In this case, it's under edit transform flip horizontal so we select that it'll go right into the window and list it here and we can now say okay to that say stop and there we go we can go back into button mode and there we go there's our new little button for flipping layers so I just loaded up my previously saved Cintiq actions again and I guess basically what I recommend that you do is just to give this a shot. You know, think of a couple of keyboard shortcuts that you're used to using a lot and uh, record a few common tasks such as flip layer and other useful commands and you know, build a little interface down there. It may help you to work almost without a keyboard or completely without a keyboard. Also, you know, in combination with the Wacom Express keys you can define, you will see that you can get by with almost not missing the keyboard. And uh, I say almost because obviously I've also been working with an Intuos for ages now and having a keyboard and using keyboard shortcuts is super fast and I still recommend you do it of course but this may help when working on a Cintiq and finding a comfortable drawing position. Uh, you'll have everything accessible within a short distance from the canvas and can just execute the usual commands from there. And uh, also to sum this up I guess it's fair to say that using actions like this worked very well for me and I think specifically for owners of tablet PCs or the regular Cintiq, this is worth looking into.